Here are some definitions and theorems about sufficient statistics, minimal sufficient, and complete statistics. A statistic is sufficient if the conditional distribution of x given t and theta is just the conditional distribution of x given t. t is the statistic, x is the data, theta is the parameters. This is the same as saying the distribution of theta given x and t is the distribution of theta given t. That's the more intuitive meaning, saying if you know the statistic, you don't need to go back to the data for more. The t is sufficient to tell you everything you need to know about theta. That's the intuitive meaning. This is the easier to compute definition. They're equivalent because they're just saying the two things are independent. Now, if you're not using the definition, how do you tell whether something is sufficient? There's two theorems that are helpful. The factorization theorem. You take the conditional distribution of x given theta, and you factor out all the thetas, and that's one function. That function will have some x's in it. If the only x's it has are in the form of the statistic, then the statistic is sufficient. If you have any other x's besides the statistic, then it's not sufficient. A conditional distribution is in the exponential family if it can be written in this form with functions of x and functions of theta in and out of an exponent. There's a theorem that says that if you have a conditional distribution of the exponential family in this form, then you can construct a sufficient statistic by taking these t functions of x, plugging in the data, summing up, and combining them. That's the second theorem for identifying sufficient statistics. Next up, minimal sufficient statistics. There's a definition and an important theorem. T of x is a minimal sufficient statistic if t of x equals a function of t prime of x for any sufficient t prime of x. Okay, let's break that down. What does that mean? Let's go back to the idea of a function. You can imagine functions in a lot of different ways, but a relevant one here is to think of a function as a partition. Say you have a function g that maps 1 to a, 2 to a, 3 to b, 4 to c, 5 to c then everything that maps to A is a set, everything that maps to B is a set, everything that maps to C is a set, and those sets are disjoint, which means we have partitioned the domain. So among the many other things a function is, it is a partition of the domain. A statistic is minimal if it is the coarsest partition of all the sufficient statistics. All right, why do we care about minimal sufficient? What's that good for? it means you're not using any more data than you have to. It could also have been called a necessary insufficient statistic. Sufficient means you have enough information from the data that you don't need the rest. And minimal sufficient means you don't have any more data than you actually need. So that's why we call it minimal sufficient. Here's a theorem for checking if a statistic is minimal sufficient. If for all sample points x and y, f of x given theta divided by f of y given theta is independent of theta if and only if t of x equals t of y, then t is minimal sufficient. So the way you use this theorem is you write the expression for f of x given theta over f of y given theta, and then you check what you have to impose on that in order for this to be independent of theta. And that gives you your requirements for t of x to equal t of y. Next is ancillary statistic. There are a lot of different definitions of it out there. One of them is this. If the distribution of s of x is independent of theta, s of x is an ancillary statistic, which makes it sound useless. Because if you're trying to make inferences about theta and your statistic doesn't depend on theta, then it's not going to do you any good. Alone, it's useless. But in conjunction with other statistics that are not ancillary, it can actually add value to your estimate. It can add precision, is one way of looking at it. Now for the most challenging idea here. A family of distributions is called complete if e theta of g of t equals 0 for all theta implies the probability that g of t equals 0 is 1 for all theta then t is called a complete statistic. This idea is very difficult to parse. Fortunately, you don't need to get into the details of that definition. We can just proceed to the important theorem that if you have an exponential distribution, 
then the statistic you can form from these t-functions is complete, satisfying technical conditions on the ranges of the w's. So that gives us a tool for determining whether a statistic is complete. Then we have Fazu's theorem that uses completeness. If t of x is a complete and minimal sufficient statistic, then t of x is independent of every ancillary statistic. In other words, you don't need those ancillary statistics to improve your estimate. Your estimate is already optimized and you don't need anything ancillary. That's the rough idea of completeness. That's what Bazu's theorem is talking about. There's one more theorem that's relevant. If a minimal sufficient statistic exists, then any complete statistic is also a minimal sufficient one. So that's the most concise summary I can give you for sufficient statistic, minimal sufficient, ancillary statistic, complete statistic, and the relevant theorems. Thanks for watching.